Hola, today I am gonna talk about Volume 9, which is the volume in which Ichinos fell in love with Ayano Koji. This volume did not have any special exam and had Ichinos's character development as the main topic. We got to know, about her past, why she was placed in Class B and that she needs to stay the hell away from Nagumo. The volume started off with her monologue, her recalling the past mistake of hers. Also about how she and the other people thought it was so terrible, which I think must be a Japanese way of looking at things. Cuz, as a bit fricked up as it is, high school students being delinquent, doing stupid things with far more terrible consequences is quite common in other countries, at least to my knowledge. Well even so I guess for someone who is as good-hearted as Ichinos when faced with the guilt of committing a crime, and also faced with the responsibility of causing a drift among her family, her reaction was understandable. She felt depressed and I think the whole mood of her house must have changed after that incident such that it became unbearable for her to stay there every day and be confronted with her mother and sister. She became a shut-in for half year, didn't go to school most likely because she didn't want to be judged by her classmates who had all likely heard about the incident while not knowing the full details. And since her feelings were still unresolved about this incident and how she mentioned that her sister and mother didn't smile anymore I don't think she particularly hung out or talked things out with them. After finding out about the elite school, plus her realizing that she wasn't really improving the circumstances with being isolated she decided to enter this school. She decided to stay true to herself and face situations head on. She also mentioned about bringing back the smiles of her mother and sister so I am assuming they didn't get along after her shoplifting and that makes me wonder about how Ichinos felt about the other rule of this school. That is the rule that states you can't contact anyone outside the school. She could have felt a bit relieved about it, while also missing them at the same time which is quite the common human reaction. Anyway I am gonna get back on this later in the video with more details. So moving on, there is shown the scene of Nagumo interviewing Ichinos, and if he wasn't a villainous enough character earlier, he sure as hell became a creepier one after this part. The only first year in the student council was Ichinos and that was because Manabu rejected every application that came across to prevent them being corrupted under Nagumo. But in this case Ichinos fell hook, line and sinker for Nagumo's trap. Nagumo cleverly lied to the dejected Ichinos that the only reason her application was rejected was because she was in class B and that Manabu won't let anyone who was not in class B join the student council. He also have his example saying that Manabu had always opposed him for that reason only. Ichinos did feel like she had enough ability to join student council and accepted that reason. She also found Nagumo more relatable and hence more impressive than Manabu. Of course we all know why Manabu rejected her and then we also find out why Nagumo had decided to overturn that decision, and that was because Ichinos was a beauty that Nagumo basically wanted to own. Ichinos did have enough ability to get into the student council but that wasn't really why Nagumo went out of his way to invite her. He did say he would love her as if she were his own personal property and so he talked her into confessing her crime of the past. Then there is the scene of Sakyangi meeting up with Nagumo in the student council room. The place had been renovated so as to make it look more like Nagumo's personal king chamber and Sakyangi did notice that fact. Of course Nagumo going off on looks alone also invites her although he is much more straightforward with her about this personal property business. But the smug lowly as prideful as ever and refuses to work under someone else, she obviously thinks she is at least smarter than Nagumo but also realizes that she falls short on some points compared to him. Something that Nagumo seemed pretty happy about because his ego was still getting boosted. Anyway they got to some more talking and the obvious truth was revealed that Nagumo had given the information about Ichinos to Sakyangi expecting her to break Ichinos' spirits but he did get a little angry about Sakyangi's worst case scenario involving Ichinos getting bullied. Because at the end of the day he just wanted Ichinos as his property, knit her gone. But they both came to a understanding and as Sakyangi left student council we see Kushida coming to meet Nagumo. Obviously to strategize with him about getting Horikita Suzun getting expelled although from the recent volume we know that this little effort of her didn't bear any fruit. And while passing by her Sakyangi did think to herself that she found Kushida, shady. Fast forwarding a bit, news spreads across all the school that Kei and Harada had officially broken up. A news everyone was surprised about, except Ayano Koji of course. Moreover to keep K in the position of popularity it was staged that K dumped Harada. And then we see everyone except one student acting mature about the whole situation. 
Yamuchi decided it was fun to poke fun at the recently dumped Harada, exposing his immature side to his classmates and the readers. Honestly he did have some small character development in volume 4.5 when he got rejected by Irie but I guess the author changed his mind. This volume combined with previous one made quite obvious something bad was gonna happen to Yamuchi sooner or later. This, combined with the fact that Sakyongi decided to pay him a visit further confirmed my suspicions. Of course, Yamuchi himself was thinking along the lines of Nisekoi and didn't suspect much. His classmates did though but what could they do when the guy in question felt like he was living in a manga. And on towards the main topic of this volume, rumors of Ichino's being a delinquent in middle school were being spread wide among the school. The most interesting reaction towards these rumors came from Horikita. She felt angry on Ikinos's behalf and wanted to help her which showed how much she had grown in comparison to before, of course although in this case it wasn't really advantageous. Horikita had obviously become more compassionate and sympathetic towards her classmates. Which is really good for her but in terms of the competition between the class it wasn't a gore choice. Like Ayanokoji thought if Ichinos fell then in simple terms of gain and loss class C did have to gain. But then he also mentions the reason why she might be acting this way, and that was most likely because of her countless tries of pursuing Kushida. While Ayanokoji wanted to get rid of Kushida, Horikita chose a Ichinos like approach and wanted to talk things out and then form a good relationship with her. She even had a talk with her in the library regarding how to approach Kushida, while being discreet of course, and I guess a small part of her wanted to be more like Ichinos. And to be a bit more like her she couldn't just abandon someone. While Horikita's reaction was interesting many other students had the same kind of reaction towards the slander directed at Ichinos but that was to be expected. Class B obviously wanted to protect their dear class representative. Even Hiori wanted to help Ichinos, and even approached Ayanokoji about it but of course being the usual him, he acted like a mere bystander who couldn't do anything even if he wanted to. Ayanokoji group's frequent meetings were also shown in this volume, and it was interesting to see Ayanokoji at least sharing some of his thoughts into the conversation, unlike when he was friends with the idiot trio where all he did was convince people he was useless. Others treated him equally and he did participate more actively in the conversation, at least for him. Anyway Haruka talked about various gossips around the school and the Ayanokoji group did discuss things varying from exam, Sakyangi meeting Yamuchi and the slandy directed at Ichinos. Ikinos' stance on the subject was quite mature as she didn't do anything much about it and just waited for time to pass. She told Kanzaki and the others to not much care for the rumors and said the same thing to Horikita and Ayanokoji when she went to visit Horikita's room at night. Of course not everyone followed her words, Kanzaki conducted his own investigation and confronted Hashimoto who had actively been spreading rumors, at the time of the confrontation, from coincidence Ayanokoji group was also there, although Kanzaki wasn't exactly excited about them being there which was interesting since it made me wonder if he would have gone about in a more aggressive way if him and Hashimoto would have been alone. Kanzaki spoke about the things most students suspected at that time, about class of being the source spreading the rumors, it being a sick scheme from Sakyongi. Hashimoto denied knowing anything, and then they had a back and forth. With there being no conclusion. Kanzaki also met with Sakyongi making the same accusations, this time Horikita also being there but then too there was no conclusion. Through passage of time the rumors died down until everyone received a note in the mailbox. And then things took a turn for the worse. She obviously knew what was coming and hence grew downhearted and her suspicious behavior made the rumors spring up even more. She shutted herself in her room and with the exams nearing around the corner things didn't look good for class B. Then there were many other things going on, Mi-chan wanted love advice from a Yonkoji of all people, Hashimoto was very suspicious of a Yonkoji and had started tailing him and Kamuro approached a Yonkoji, firstly talking about how she became Sakyongi's pawn. How she was a habitual shoplifter and Ichinos was a shoplifter too and she felt sympathetic towards Ichinos and hence wanted a Yonkoji to help her. All lies of course, something a Yonkoji saw through easily but the thing here was that Sakyongi wanted a Yonkoji to intervene and protect Ichinos, although it was more so for her entertainment. Sakyongi did try giving a helping hand to Ichinos, I say try because regardless of her doing such a thing a Yonkoji would have intervened considering his reasons. But the important thing is Sakyongi didn't really do such a bad thing, per se. 
she played dirty shore, but one way or another Nagumo would have used that information to make Ichinos his pawn. With things passing as it did it ultimately impacted Ichinos in a good way, something Sakyongi had predicted because she did want a Yonkoji to intervene after all. Then there was the Valentine's Day along the corner where Hashimoto decided to tail Yonkoji. And Ayankoji knowing that Kei would give him chocolate setted things up in a way that Hashimoto saw that, and after some talk and unbelieved from Hashimoto's side, Hashimoto decided that he would likely gain nothing from following him any longer so he didn't follow him after that. Of course this is where Ayankoji implemented his strategy. Just the night before Ayankoji had called upon Kushida and made a deal which was completely disadvantageous towards him. He had decided to get the school involved by spreading more rumors about students from class C and D and he decided to have Kushida tell him the juicy secrets about the students, by giving Ger half his points every month in exchange of that information. Although on surface it did look extremely disadvantageous for him, Iyankoji's main reason for helping Ichinos was this. By making this deal he got to know about the depth of the information Kushida carried, aka, how dangerous was her secret weapon. And after analyzing all that, Ayankoji had decided that he would get rid of Kushida later and hence the contract would be null and void. Bringing no burden to him. Afterwards he called upon Vice President Kiriyama, they both met in library where Ayankoji kinda of pressured him into posting those rumors through his phone. Vice President was of course against it at first, considering the consequences he would face after being discovered. But Ayankoji cleverly said it won't matter all that because it could all be blames upon Nagumo. So our boy had of course thought this all through, even though he pretend in front of Kushida that he was taking a huge risk. Being the perfect person that he was he implemented his strategy in such a way that it could not come back to bite him later. And he also received chocolates from Hiori at the library. Afterwards new rumors suddenly started spouting from everywhere, every class was thrown in chaos. And then once again Yamuchi showed his immature side which made him the most hated in the class. K blushed and all because Ayankoji had also spread the rumor that he liked K. Of course K didn't know he was the source or else it would have led to quite a cute moment. Then there was this very interesting foreshadowing about which there exists many theories. So class D and class A got an argument because obviously class A was the most likely suspect for spreading bad rumors about them. Hiori was the one who had called the meeting to talk things out. I think she mainly did it because she thought Ishizaki and the others would eventually want to confront Class A and then things would obviously get violent. But if she called this meeting first in a peaceful manner and talked things out then it could all resolve. But of course things got violent especially after Hashimoto told the fact that Nagumo was going to let small violence slide. A Yankoji group was present this time for the confrontation too although this time it was no coincidence. Both sides got to fighting and Akito tried stopping them and we get to see his impressive fighting ability although he was still on E-person and couldn't stop them. And Ayankoji didn't bother with such things, but then Ibuki's id card slipped out of her pants and Ayankoji noticed something very unusual about it. Then B later called Horiki to Manbu about it and he too found whatever it was unusual, too. This whole thing is still a mystery and it may just be revealed in the next year 2 volume or possibly later. But it definitely is a plot point that would be important later on, that much is obvious. Moving on, Ayankoji acted behind the scenes too, visiting Ichino's every day and sitting across her door not speaking but making sure that she knew that he was there. Until two days before exam where Ayankoji and Ichino's both knew that the next day Ichino's had to get out of her room and face her classmates. Then they got to talking and eventually Ichino's kept it all out. She talked a beer how she had in fact shoplifted in the past. But it was for the sake of her younger sister who had been promised a gift from their mother but alas that was not possible. When the sister found out about the shoplifting she felt just simply happy to get her gift. But the mother was furious and had Ichinos apologize and return it back to the store, which must have been embarrassing as hell. Also the little sister was sad once again that she didn't get a gift, and then she got a gift only for it to be taken away. It naturally led to tears to be shed. This whole incident spread across the school too, where Ichinos had a good reputation as the student council president but now all that was down the gutter. Ayankoji listened quietly and it was at this time that the bond between them went beyond from just casual friends at least for Ichinos, who felt grateful and more emotion towards this person who had saved her. 
but the thing is a Yonkoji seems to have a plan ready for Ichinos in his head, cause all the time he thinks things like, I would have to apologize to you one day. It's like one day a Yonkoji would crush her, spirit, class and all. And he seems to have thought how he would go about it all through too. Then the next day Sakyongi directly confronts Ichinos, calls her a criminal all to break her spirit but her spirit had been crushed and rebuilt all by a Yonkoji the day before so now she could stand strong against anyone and then with the audience of other class present Ichinos opens up about her past apologizes but still manages to steal hearts and continue leading the class. And while seeing Ichino standing strong even though she had been holed up inside her room all this time before, Sakyongi figures that a Yonkoji is involved. And then the school gets involved too so that Sakyongi or any other person target Ichinos regarding the slander anymore. Nagumo personally pays a visit to the class. And then while Ichinos expresses her gratitude to a Yonkoji, Nagumo gives a Yonkoji a look to show that he is annoyed by his involvement in his plan. Ichinos of course knows that Nagumo had given Sakyongi the information about her past but at the surface at least she acts the same toward him. But after that I am sure she doesn't hold him in as high regard as she did in the past. Ichinos is shown to be smart after all, so she wouldn't go make an enemy out of Nagumo when all things have blown over and all that would do is cause misfortune over her and her class. Then there are the short stories where Sakyongi does say that she was going to offer Yamuchi a stairway to either heaven or hell. Then there is Ichino's buying chocolates for Yonkoji, the all shy talk she has with the staff while buying chocolate shows that her feelings towards a Yonkoji had changed from that point onwards. Of course now that I look back at this volume the thing that stands out the most is the Ibuki's ID card incident. Cause at this point in the year 2 volumes it might just be the thing that changes the entire favor of the tests. I'm happy all the time. I'm happy all the time. I'm happy.